Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a really fun video. It's going to be a seller amp tutorial. So everybody is basically talking about seller amp. It's crazy. Like the rave about seller amp is insane. I have people asking me like every single day, do you use seller amp? Do you use seller amp? And I personally don't really use seller amp. I've only started using it recently, but I've learned how to use it and I really do think it's a great tool. It's an extremely fair price. We actually hosted a private meeting with the owners of seller amp to teach our members from our program how to use seller amp. So I got to kind of learn through them directly. So I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of cool ways that you can use seller amp to find profitable products for Amazon. All right, guys, so let's get straight into the tutorial. So there are two different ways that I like to use seller amp. I think the storefront stocking method is probably the most popular amongst all of the Amazon sellers that use it as well, but I honestly prefer to do it a different way. So I'm going to show you guys my first like favorite way to do it and then I'm going to show you guys the storefront stocking way. So I like to actually start on a website. So let's say I'm going to go to Canadian Tire. It's a tool store for Canadians, but when I first started selling on Amazon, a lot of the first products that I were that I was buying was actually from Canadian Tire because they have a lot of inventory that is not restricted for beginners. So definitely if you're Canadian and you're just starting out, definitely Definitely check out Canadian Tire because they have a lot of great stuff. So I'm going to go look at the toy section just because Christmas is around the corner. Obviously, that's something that I've been wanting to prioritize for the holidays. So I'm going to go to action figures just choosing something random. And so what's really cool about Seller Amp, as long as you have your Chrome extension added right here, literally once you open it up, it will actually try to like pull up data from Canadian Tire's website. And so what you need to do, for example, this product's on clearance and like look at that price. That's crazy. That's like more than 50% off. So I'm going to click on this product. And then once you're actually on the exact listing for this product on the on the website that you're on, so the Canadian Tire listing for this product, you're going to click on the Seller Amp Chrome extension. It's going to pop open. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to go check if the listing for this product exists on Amazon. So I'm not sure if this is the same one, but I think so based on the title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this link right here. So this button here will pop open the Amazon listing. So it's so simple to do this like it makes it extremely easy and if you guys watch my manual sourcing video that i made a couple of months ago what i used to do when i was manual sourcing is i would copy and paste the title of the product go to amazon plug in the title into the search and then try to find the listing myself and so you can do the same thing but i just find that it's so much simpler and easier if you just go to the website click on the chrome extension click on the listing like it makes it super easy and so now that we found a potential product it doesn't mean that it's necessarily good basically your goal is to just start looking for matching products so check if the product exists already on amazon and then what you're going to do is you're going to analyze it make sure there's not too much competition you want to check who's on the listing with you which you can do so using the seller amp chrome extension right here you can also check the profits you can go over here how much would it cost you to buy this product this product costs 39.93 so obviously i don't think it's going to end up being profitable but we will check for fun so you're going to put the cost here of how much it's going to cost you to buy it the sale price will actually already be plugged into seller amp which makes it very helpful and then you're going to be able to see your profit your roi the max cost so in order for this product to actually be profitable the max cost would have had to been 24 dollars not $39. It also tells you an estimated monthly sale, so approximately 26 units per month. And if you guys use Keepa, it actually, the sales per month on Seller Amp tends to be quite similar to the drops on Keepa, just if you guys use Keepa, which by the way, you should be using Keepa. But this one seems to be pretty good in terms of accuracy when it comes to sales per month. It will also show you the BSR rank and what percentage you are in. So yeah, other than that, there's also a really cool feature here where it will show you alerts. Whenever you have a suspected IP complaint, product so like it may potentially have an ip complaint it will have an ip alert over here it doesn't mean that you're going to ignore every single product that has an ip complaint because i found some products that did say ip complaint but they were perfectly fine you just need to know how to read keepa so keepa is your best friend when it comes to avoiding ip complaints and all of that seller amp will also tell you if you can sell the product or not um, i think it's because i'm not logged in maybe that's why it's not showing it to me but usually it will say yes or no so if you can sell the product, it will say yes. If you can't, it will say no. Seller Amp will also show you the Keepa graph right over here, which is really cool. You have to have Keepa activated, I believe, to be able to actually have this feature shown here. So you need Keepa regardless, guys. Just get Keepa. It is your best friend. 
but other than that i don't really use any of the other features there's some more stuff over here i pretty much just use the quick info and the offers and then i use keepa to finish analyzing the product properly because keepa is where the most important data is and yeah so that's the first way to look for products so i'm going to show you guys it one more time like with a different product so what you can literally do and this is obviously time consuming but literally just click on every single product that you find this one's not in stock but we're still going to check it for fun so again you're going to press on your seller amp chrome extension it's going to pop open and then you're going to try to see if you can find that product this one i don't think it's on amazon sometimes you want to scroll down to the next page to see if you can find it but i don't see it so i'm going to close this product and i'm going to go try another one and so basically that's what you're going to do you're just going to do this over and over again until you find products that are listed on amazon for a higher price and I've been really liking this method because I do this method manually or I, I used to do this manually by myself without using a f like a tool for it and I really like it was always my favorite method of finding products because it kind of feels like a treasure hunt to me and it just it's fun. So now that I have a tool that allows me to do it faster, it's more efficient, it's less time consuming. So I'm very happy with Seller Amp in terms of helping me be able to manual source but more efficiently. And yeah, so that's pretty much the first method. This is my favorite way to use it. Now I'm going to show you guys the other other method that most people use it for and most people praise like people are obsessed with doing this and i personally am not a big fan of storefront stocking i don't know why like i tweeted this the other day and and a lot of people were like what like i find most of my products by doing this but i don't know maybe it's just that i don't have enough experience doing it i don't know what it is but i just don't seem to have as much luck when it comes to storefront stocking as opposed to what i just showed you guys so i don't know because a lot of people have bad products and i just don't find it's very easy to find good products through other sellers accounts i have been practicing a lot more so i'm not, I'm not completely dismissing it i'm still trying to give it a try and trying to get good at it but uh what i usually do so what i'll do typically is i'll look for sellers that have similar amounts of reviews to me and if you hover your mouse over it you can see all of these people here have reviews so 431 46 i usually obviously look for fba sellers so basically just look for somebody that has a similar amount of reviews as you because reviews are really important and if i were to click on this seller here who has 431 reviews sometimes it might be hard for me to compete with somebody who has a lot more reviews than me my account is personally still under 100 reviews because it takes really long to get reviews so obviously i'm going to choose somebody that has a lower amount of reviews like maybe this person here so basically what you're going to do is you're going to click on this person and then what's going to happen is seller amps actually going to plug in their storefront and let me just move my camera but they're going to plug in this person's storefront and now we get to see all of their products with a summarized Keepa graph. And okay, maybe the reason why I hated storefront stocking before is because I used to never do it with Seller Amp. Now that I'm using it with Seller Amp, I really find it's a lot more bearable. I can do it and it's a lot easier. It's so it's so simple because you can see a summary of the Keepa graph right here quickly. So you can kind of just scroll down until you find ideally what a good Keepa graph looks like. And I mean, this person, I don't know, <laughs> their products don't really look all that great. But anyways, this is how you do it you basically click on the seller it's going to open up their storefront you're going to look over here at the keepa graphs until you see one that looks good then check if you can find the product sold for cheaper and i'll show you how to do that and so i actually don't even see any that look good to me <laughs> from this person's storefront but let's pretend that this one here looks good so what you're actually going to do is you're going to click on instead of the amazon listing button there's a google button so what this will do is it will actually reverse source for this product so if you click on this link it's going to pop open over here and you're going to be able to see where can i buy this product and if you can find this product sold for cheaper elsewhere then there you go you have a product a profitable product that you can sell on amazon um, but obviously like this is just another method of looking for products you really just have to dig through people's storefronts and find sellers that are actually selling quality products which like i said in my experience seems to be quite rare but i have been getting better at it and i'm practicing so i'm not completely dismissing this method because i do find that it is much easier while using seller app so yeah those are pretty much the two quick ways to use seller amp obviously i plan on making more videos about seller amp as i get to learn how to use it a bit more this is basically what i've been doing for the past month uh, when i'm sourcing i still use tactical arbitrage for a lot of my products because tactical arbitrage will hand you the products basically and you just have to make sure that they're good and if you know how to set up your filters well on tactical arbitrage then you're gonna find good products i don't know i'm still team tactical arbitrage just because i'm so used to it but i really have been loving using seller app specifically to help me with manual sourcing which i love so i like both softwares now i actually pay for both and i'm probably gonna keep paying for both because 
I like to use them for two different methods of sourcing. So I hope this video was helpful. It was very, very quick, I know. So please let me know if you guys would like a more in-depth video. I can do maybe like a live sourcing video, whatever you guys want to see, please let me know. But this is just a quick explanation of how SellerAmp works and how easily it actually is to to source with it. And, uh, you know, SellerAmp is quite affordable. I believe it's around $20 per month. It's a really fair price for the amount of value that you get. So for somebody that's just starting out and, and you don't want to invest in a, in a more expensive software like Tactical Arbitrage, this is definitely a great place to start. And by just using SellerAmp, you're going to teach yourself how to get good at sourcing because manual sourcing reverse sourcing storefront stocking all of this takes a lot of time like it's usually a, a little bit more tedious in my opinion than using tactical arbitrage but the more you do it the better you'll become and it's kind of like a crucial thing that you need to learn as an amazon seller so get seller amp start practicing how to do these styles of sourcing and trust me you'll get so much better at it and you'll find a bunch of great products it just takes time to learn and takes time for you to hunt down those products so don't give up guys it's q4 this is the time of the year where we need to crush it we need to keep working hard maximize everything as much as you can and yeah that is pretty much it for this video and so thank you guys so much for watching if you found this video helpful please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in the next video have a wonderful day guys bye